Hello students, in the continuation of classes of the larynx, today we are going to discuss about the membranes of larynx. Now when you will see the membranes of larynx, there are three names which you will come to know. One is the thyrohyoid membrane, second is known as quadrangular membrane and third is known as cricovocal membrane or the most commonly it is known as conus elasticus. So, we will discuss all the three membranes one by one today. So, first is the what is about the membranes of larynx. So, the skeletal framework of the larynx is joined to the surrounding structure by a and extrinsic membranes. So, there are two types of the membrane. One is the extrinsic membrane, another is the intrinsic membrane. Extrinsic membranes are the membranes which connect the skeletal framework of the larynx to the surrounding structures. The cartilages are also interconnected to each other by intrinsic ligaments and the fibroelastic membranes. So, what does it mean that you will have two sets of the membrane. One set of membrane connect the larynx with the surrounding structures while the cartilages of the larynx are interconnected by another set of the membranes which are known as intrinsic membranes. So, what are the membranes you will come to know? One is thyrohyoid membrane, quadrangular membrane and conus elasticus. Now, when you will see all the three membrane, you will realize that thyrohyoid membrane is known as extrinsic or external membrane while the remaining two that means quadrangular membrane and conus elasticus are internal membrane. They are intrinsic membrane. They lie inside the laryngeal cavity. Now, in this diagram, if you will see that this is your hyoid bone. Now, there is a membrane which is connecting the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone and this membrane is known as thyrohyoid membrane. Apart from that, you have the two membrane. One is the upper membrane inside the laryngeal cavity. Now, this upper membrane is known as quadrangular membrane. And there is a one more membrane in the lower part inside the laryngeal cavity is known as conus elasticus. It is also known as cricovocal membrane. So, let us start with the thyrohyoid membrane. So, thyrohyoid membrane is an extrinsic membrane that anchors the skeleton of the larynx to the hyoid bone. So, this is the important thing as the name itself suggesting it is a connection between the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. The thyrohyoid membrane connects the whole length of upper border of the lamina and superior horn of thyroid cartilage to the body and greater horn of hyoid bone. Now, in this diagram, you can appreciate that this is your hyoid bone. Now, in this hyoid bone, this is your greater cornu and this is your body. Now, in the lower part, this is your lamina of your thyroid cartilage and this is the superior cornu of thyroid cartilage. In between, you have connection and this connection is known as thyrohyoid membrane. So, when you are reading the thyrohyoid membrane, it is present in the upper part of the larynx and it is a connection between the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. But the important thing is that the thyrohyoid membrane ascend behind the body of hyoid bone and it attaches to the upper border. Now, what does it mean? The, it means is that this is your outer uh, margin of hyoid bone. Now, this is your inferior border. This is your superior border. Now, generally what you uh, are able to understand with the thyrohyoid membrane that this is the hyoid. And suppose this is the thyroid and generally we draw here with the upper border of thyroid to the lower border of hyoid. But here it is not like that. When you will see the upper attachment of the thyrohyoid membrane, it ascend that means it arises from this point and it ascend posteriorly to get attachment here near the upper border of hyoid bone. So, it is on the posterior side of the hyoid bone. Now, in this diagram also you can see that this is the upper attachment of your thyrohyoid membrane not on the inferior border. Inferior border will come somewhere here, 
but you will realize that the membrane is attaching at some uh, level which is higher than the inferior border. So you have to keep this thing in mind that thyrohyoid membrane ascend behind the body. So this is the body. So it ascend behind the body to get attachment on the posterior aspect near the upper border of hyoid bone. Now this gap or the area between the thyrohyoid membrane and body, this area is having a bursa. Now this bursa is helpful in the movement of the uh, bone, hyoid bone when you have the swallowing. So it ascends the larynx. So this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind about the thyroid membrane. Generally you have the question on the upper attachment. So superior attachment is not on the inferior margin of the hyoid bone. It is rather on the superior margin but on the posterior side and the gap between the hyoid mem thyroid membrane and the body is containing a bursa and this bursa is helpful in the movement. The thyroid membrane form the lateral wall of the piriform fossa or the recess and it is perforated by the internal laryngeal nerve which is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve that comes from the vagus and the superior laryngeal vessels. Now in this diagram, if you will see the periform fossa, what you are able to understand that this is the area where you will find the fossa. Now this periform fossa is one sided bound by this fold. Now this fold is known as airy epiglottic fold because it is coming from this epiglottic cartilage and approaching to this arytenoid cartilage. So this connection is known as airy epiglottic muscle and this airy epiglottic muscle present into this fold and this fold is known as airy epiglottic fold. So when you will see this periform fossa, this fossa is medially bounded by this airy epiglottic fold and laterally it is bounded by the two structure upper is the thyrohyoid membrane and lower part is medial surface or inner surface of thyroid cartilage. So you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are dealing with the piriform fossa you have to go inside the thyrohyoid membrane and in the lower part on the inner side of thyroid cartilage but on the lateral part of your airy epiglottic fold. Now what about the thyrohyoid ligaments? So the median portion is thickened and it forms the median thyrohyoid ligament and it, the round cord like lateral thyrohyoid ligament is there. Now in this diagram, this thick cord like lateral thickening of the membrane is known as lateral thyrohyoid ligament which is present on both right and left side while this part is known as median thyrohyoid ligament which is comparatively less thick. It forms the posterior border of thyrohyoid membrane that is the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. It connects the tip of superior thyroid cornu to the posterior or horn of the greater uh, horn. So here you can see this is the posterior end of the greater horn. This is the upper end of the superior horn of thyroid cartilage and this connection is known as lateral thyrohyoid ligament. Now what about the intrinsic membranes? I told you that there are two intrinsic membranes, quadrangular membrane and conus elasticus. So the fibroelastic membranes of the larynx which lies within the cartilaginous framework of larynx. So whenever you are reading the intrinsic membrane, you have to keep this thing in mind that intrinsic membranes lies inside the larynx. These membranes lies beneath the laryngeal mucosa. What does it mean? That when you are having the section of the larynx, you will find the innermost layer is the mucosal lining and just below the mucosa, you will find these fibroelastic membranes. Membrane form a discontinuous sheet. Now this is again the important thing that the continuity is not there in the whole length of larynx. Larynx start from the aryepiglottic folds which is actually known as laryngeal inlet 
and the larynx and where the cricoid cartilage continue below with the trachea. So in this whole length, you will find that there is a gap present and that's why it is written that the membranes are not in the continuation. There is a discontinuous sheet of this fibroelastic membrane which is separated on both the side of the larynx by a horizontal cleft and this gap or the cleft lies between the vestibular and vocal ligaments and these ligaments are covered by the mucosa then they are termed as a fold. Now in this diagram if you will see what you are able to understand that this is your area of inlet. So this is the inlet and this is your cricoid cartilage. So this will become the lower end of the larynx. Now in this whole length from inlet to the lower end what you will realize that there is a cleft. Now this cleft is responsible for the discontinuity of this membrane. Now this cleft is present between the two folds and this upper one is known as vestibular ligament while the lower one is known as vocal ligament. Now here you can appreciate the two different things that when this fibroelastic membrane covered with the mucosa it appears in this way. Now what is the difference between these two diagrams? The only difference is that in this di diagram you can see the laryngeal inlet and this is the lower part of the laryngeal inlet where you are able to appreciate that the whole membrane is covered by the mucosa. So, if you are seeing here this whitish appearance, the whitish appearance is only the membranes, but these membranes are covered by the mucosa. So, you, you are able to appreciate the red color here because it is a mucus covered larynx. Clear? Now, here this upper part is known as vestibular ligament, but once the mucosa will come, then it is known as vestibular fold. In the same way, this lower part is known as vocal ligament, but once it is covered by the mucosa, then it is termed as vocal fold. So, this cleft is a gap between the two folds, that is vestibular fold and vocal fold. So, what about the intrinsic membrane? The membrane lies within the wall of upper part of the laryngeal cavity. Now, this is the first thing which you have to keep in mind that in laryngeal cavity, we will divide this cavity into the two part up to this fold from the inlet. This is known as upper part below this fold that is here till the cricoid is known as lower part. Now, in this upper part of the larynx, we are using the word is known as laryngeal vestibule. So, what is laryngeal vestibule? Laryngeal vestibule means the upper part of the laryngeal cavity up to the vestibular ligament. The part of cavity up to the vestibular ligament is known as laryngeal vestibule. And the membrane which you are able to see in this is known as quadrangular membrane. So, this is the first question for your exam. What is quadrangular membrane? So, quadrangular membrane is a fibroelastic membrane which is present in the laryngeal vestibule or you should say it is present between the laryngeal inlet and vestibular ligament. It extends between the arytenoid cartilage and sides of the epiglottis. So, this is the epiglottis. So, from the side of epiglottis it reach till this arytenoid cartilage. The membrane lies within the wall of lower part. Now, where is the lower part? That means below this vocal ligament up to the cricoid cartilage. And this part is known as infraglottic cavity. This area is termed as infraglottic cavity. And the membrane present in this infraglottic is known as conus elasticus. What is that? Conus elasticus. So, the Conus elasticus connects the thyroid cartilage to cricoid and arytenoid cartilages. So, my dear students, whenever you are reading the intrinsic membranes, you have to keep two names in your mind, quadrangular membrane and conus elasticus. What is quadrangular membrane? It is nothing but a membrane which is extending from the eriepiglottic fold 
to the vestibular ligament and it is the area known as laryngeal vestibule while the infraglottic cavity that means the area which is below the vocal ligaments is lined by the membrane is known as conus elasticus now we'll discuss these two membrane one by one so first is the quadrangular membrane so the quadrangular membrane is a thin fibroelastic membrane each quadrangular membrane passes from the lateral margins of the epiglottis to apex of the ipsilateral arytenoid cartilages so here you can see that this is the apex of the arytenoid cartilage this is the lateral margin so when you will see from the posterior side you will find that this is the lateral margin of your epiglottis and here is the arytenoid cartilages so between them you will have the connection and these connections are nothing but these are the upper border of quadrangular membrane so here you can see that this is the upper border of quadrangular membrane its anterior border is attached to the side of the lower half of epiglottis that we just seen that the anterior border is attached to the epiglottis the posterior border is much shorter and it is attached to the arytenoid cartilage so the posterior border is attached to the arytenoid cartilage the upper border and lower borders are free now this is again the question for your exam now when you will see this membrane this membrane is like here now this is the shape of the membrane now this is the anterior border this is the posterior border this is the upper border and this is the lower border now you have seen that this border is attached here on the sides of the epiglottis while this is attached here on the arytenoid cartilage this upper border is free and lower border is free now upper border slopes posteriorly and it form the airy epiglottic ligament so this upper free border is considered as a airy epiglottic ligament the mucous membrane when cover this fold then it convert into the airy epiglottic fold so you have to keep this thing in mind then whenever we are talking about any fold in the larynx we are talking about the mucosa covered ligaments but when we are using only the word ligament then we are not talking about the mucus covering so in the same way you have the airy epiglottic ligament which is covered by the mucosa then it is known as airy epiglottic fold the cuneiform cartilage lies within this airy epiglottic fold now we'll move to the lower border now this is the lower border of this quadrangular membrane and this lower border forms the vestibular ligament this is the, the lower border is known as vestibular ligament and the another important name is false vocal fold and when they are covered by the mucosa we will use word vestibular fold so dear students this is the very commonly asked question in your exam what is false vocal cord so the false vocal cord is nothing but it is the lower free margin of quadrangular membrane and this lower free margin of quadrangular membrane is also known as vestibular ligament when the vestibular ligament is covered by the mucosa then it is known as vestibular fold the two airy epiglottic fold forms the margin of the oval inlet of larynx so this vocal folds are these two uh, airy epiglottic folds are going to form your laryngeal inlet clear so in this diagram you are able to appreciate that this is your airy epiglottic fold now this airy epiglottic fold of one side and this fold of other side is making a laryngeal inlet and this is your laryngeal inlet when you will go through the laryngeal inlet inside you will reach to this lower margin of your quadrangular membrane which is termed as false vocal folds or vestibular folds now what about the conus elasticus now conus elasticus 
is the part of the fibroelastic membrane which is found in the lower part of the cavity of larynx. Where you will find the conus elasticus? You will find the conus elasticus in the lower part of the laryngeal cavity. Upper part is lined by a quadrangular membrane, lower part is lined by a conus elasticus. Now there is a very important concept because the students are having the confusion. So the concept is that there are two synonyms which used for the conus elasticus. One is known as cricovocal membrane, another is known as cricothyroid membrane. So here now you have to keep this thing in mind that cricovocal membrane, cricothyroid membrane and conus elasticus all the three are same and they are present in the lower part of the laryngeal cavity. So the conus elasticus or the cricothyroid membrane consists three distinct part. One is known as right and left lateral part or right and left lateral cricothyroid membrane while a midline thick area is known as median portion. The term conus elasticus is mainly used for these right and left part of cricothyroid membrane. Now in this diagram you can see that this is the cricoid and this is the connection between the cricoid and thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage and this connection is known as cricothyroid membrane. You can see. Now this cricothyroid membrane is having the two part midline thick part and the lateral part. The lateral part which you are able to see here is actually known as uh, cricovocal membrane or conus elasticus. The lateral parts are thinner as compared to the midline structure. The median part is of, often also known as anterior cricothyroid ligament. The median cricothyroid ligament is thickened in the center and it is also termed as the part of conus elasticus. Now in this diagram, you have to first keep this thing in mind that when you are talking about the conus elasticus, you always have to consider the connection between the cricoid cartilage with thyroid cartilage. That means we are going in the lower part of the laryngeal cavity. And this connection is known as cricothyroid membrane or conus elasticus. And I told you that the upper margin is known as vocal cord. That's why it is also known as cricovocal membrane. So the lateral ligaments which are actually considered as a conus elasticus are inferiorly attached to the upper border of arch of the cricoid cartilage and the lamina. Here you can see this is the upper border of the arch and the lamina from where you are having the lower attachment of this cricovocal membrane. Now what about the superior attachment of laterally placed cricovocal membrane? It does not attach to the inferior border of thyroid cartilage. Now this line is very important. but it extends upward within the thyroid lamina. Now when you will see this diagram, what you are able to understand that if I will draw the inferior border of thyroid cartilage, then it should be here. It should be here. This will be the inferior border of thyroid cartilage. But what you are able to understand that this white color area is approaching here till the mid portion of inner surface of the thyroid angle. So that means this cricovocal membrane or the cricothyroid membrane ascend inside the inner surface of your thyroid cartilage. So that's why it is written here that superior attachment is not on this inferior border, but it extends upward. It extends upward. So now where it extends? Now that we will see. So when you will see the each lateral cricothyroid ligament, it has a free thick superior edge. So where is the th superior edge? This is the superior edge. Now this superior edge is a thick and free. Now the important another thing is that this edge attached anteriorly 
to the posterior or back surface of the angle of thyroid cartilage. Now, this is the thyroid cartilage and you know that thyroid cartilage is having the right and left uh, lamina which are having an angle. So, it is attached on this inner side of the angle. So, it is having the anterior attachment on the inner side of the thyroid angle or that is known as Adam's apple and this is almost midway between the notch and the lower border. So, this will be the notch, this is the lower border and almost the midway you will have the anterior attachment of this upper free margin of your cricothyroid membrane or conus elasticus. At the back, this, at the back, this border or this superior free edge get attached to the vocal process of arytenoid cartilage. So, you know that there is an anterior process of the arytenoid which is known as vocal process. So, this free edge constitute the vocal ligament or the vocal cord and they are all that is why this membrane is known as cricovocal membrane. Clear? So, now you have to understand two concepts that there is a false vocal cord which are nothing but these are the inferior margin of quadrangular membrane and there is a true vocal cord which are upper margin of conus elasticus and this conus elasticus is a connection between the cricoid cartilage and vocal cords that is why it is also known as cricovocal membrane. Now, what is the function of this conus elasticus? The conus elasticus drive its name because it is cone shape or funnel shape. Now, the advantage of this funneling shape of the lower part of the larynx that it produces uh, and why it is produced? It is produced anatomically due to the curving in the wall between the inferior and superior attachment and the advantage is that this shape is maximized maximize the efficiency or efficient flow of the air towards the rima glottidis during the phonation. Now, what is rima glottidis? Rima glottidis is a gap between the right and left vocal fold. Now, when you will see, this is the angle of your uh, thyroid cartilage. Posteriorly, you will have the two arytenoid cartilage. In between, we are having the connection one is the right vocal fold, another is the left vocal fold and this gap is known as rima glottidis. Now, for the production of the voice, for the phonation, you need the air to vibrate these fold and that is possible by the expiration, not by the inspiration. So, for this expiration, you need this funneling or the cone shape uh, uh, this cone shape structure through which the efficiency of the air for the vibration of vocal cord will increase. Clear? Now, what about the vestibular and vocal fold? I already told you that the free edge, lower free edge of the quadrangular membrane that is the vestibular ligament lies above the vocal ligament and there is a gap between the two vocal and uh, your vestibular ligament. So, the first and the most important question is that mark this fold. So, you have to understand that the upper one is false, upper one is false vocal cord and this lower one is known as vocal cord or you can say true vocal cord, clear? So, you have to understand that the upper fold is actually the uh, false vocal cord and these are the lower free margin of quadrangular membrane. The quadrangular membrane and cricovocal membrane, that means this upper membrane and this lower membrane, they all are lined by the mucosa. The part of the mucosa or the mucous membrane which covers the vestibular and vocal ligament convert them into the vestibular and vocal folds. So, that I already told you that when you are talking about the ligament, you are talking about the membranous part. When you are talking about the folds, you should keep in mind that the membrane and ligament covered by the mucus mucosa. So, at the end of this class, what you are able to understand? You should know the basic concept. What do you mean by the quadrangular membrane? What do you mean by the cricovocal membrane? Why cricovocal membrane is also known as conus elasticus? What is the connection between the cricoid and thyroid cartilage? What is the cricothyroid ligament? 
then the most important thing is what is the difference between the false vocal cord and true vocal cord so this is all about today's class thank you